Well, the rain has let up for a few minutes here, so I'm going to do a little inventory. It's going to be kind of a quick week, it looks like. And, uh, but, do a little quick inventory here. And, see, try to see exactly what I need from the parts store. No, we had this red wire here. Okay. It's running over here. Down in there. I'm not sure where it even goes to. But still gotta clean out that box. It's gonna be a not not a pleasant job. That air box. Okay. I'm not sure where that red wire goes. But it looks like it's something to do with the starter, so I'll, I'll look at it that way. Okay. There's definitely gonna be some wiring repairs that are gonna have to be done here. That really sucks. But I am going to do things a little different than what I normally would do. I think I'm going to try to get a battery in it. And try to see if it will turn over. I think that's really going to be the goal. This weather has had us messed up pretty bad. Not much I can do about it. Uh, so I have to try to accomplish something. So I guess what the plan is going to have to be is I'm going to replace the wiring. I know that it's messed up. That has to be replaced. Like this wire here, it's obvious that's not going to let it run, not going to let it turn over. Uh, there's some wiring here for the headlights, things like that I'm not going to worry about right now. It's the uh, whole idea about what I'm doing here is just to see if it'll run. So I'm going to say all of those hook on there. Well, after driving all over town four times and even out of town, I finally got a few of the things that we need and it looks like it's just in time for the rain to start moving back in so I'm not sure exactly um, yeah I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get anything done or not but I'm gonna start with the liquid tape it's got to be done and uh, so I'm gonna just find every place I can find that's an open nick or whatever and put the liquid tape on it the more I've looked at this truck, if it does run, we're going to order a harness when I ain't going to fool around with it. So I got this soldered back together with a new wire. Remember this other wire that was here was shoot all the crap. Um, got this one on there. I used one of these new shrink wrap solder seal wire connector things. I'm not a big fan. This is the third one I had on it. It finally actually worked. So keep that in mind. Not a fan of that. I'm gonna crawl under the truck and get this hooked up. I do believe this is going to the starter. So I'm gonna get that done. Then I'm going to come back and start working on getting the wiring done here on this injector harness. Uh, it's just this front one that's torn up. I'm going to replace it and then we'll move on to fuel pump, or excuse me, then we'll move on to fuel filter and air filter. And then we'll see about throwing a battery in here and just seeing what it does. I'm going to turn you on here. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see anything I'm doing, but I'm going to try. If not, I'll edit you out. How about that?
starting to get so dark, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see anything, but I think we got her together. Okay, so this red wire right here runs over, and this green wire is tapping into it. I have tried to search where this green wire is going, and I can't figure it out without really getting into the dash and everything and I just don't want to do that yet till I turn this truck over and see if it's gonna actually you know be worth going forward with so I'm gonna unplug because it looks like I can just unplug it I'm gonna unplug it from the red wire and then tape this red wire off and uh, if it'll let me yeah Anyway, there you go. Hmm. Wow, that bad boy is tight. I'm not really sure how much of this you're going to be able to see. I'm going to try to gently peel this back. Uh, give myself some, some room here. This harness is in pretty bad shape. You know, and even though we clean this thing, it still kind of grosses me out. It's just still pretty nasty. So I'm trying not to slip up and cut myself or, or anything. I don't want to be doing that under here. So so I have this new pigtail here made in China. I'm going to go ahead and prepare these ends. That way when I get up here it's not as hard to do. I don't have to do as much crimping and stuff inside. Not 50% of it away so that's what I'm going to do right now. There we go. Perfect. Now you can almost see what I'm doing. Anyway. Had some complaints on the other videos about me not doing any work or, or anything. And I just kind of wanted to touch on that real quick. I'm, I mean, it's okay if you don't if you don't like the videos, it's fine. It's not for everybody. Um but it's kind of I want you to understand that my channel is unapologetically show your work it means that's what it, that's why I started one of the reasons I started the channel I wanted to show a channel that actually shows what's happening I mean I can sit here and tell you or say well I'm gonna change this and then cut the camera off and when you come back it's changed well is that entertaining maybe it is maybe if you don't have enough time to put the time in I get it but that's not this channel I'm gonna actually try to show my work I think that's you know part of the revival to make it you know relatable to where you can see what's actually happened so that's why it is the way it is that's why the videos are the way they are I'm trying to show the whole process enough of that crap i'm just going to try to crimp all these on and i will cut away from this because you're going to see me do it and i'm going to repeat that for all of the entire harness like that You have to remember when you're putting all these new harnesses on, 90% of the time, unless you get one that is a OEM harness, the color of the wires are going to be different. I don't know why, but they are. So keep that in mind as you go. And uh, I suggest removing one wire at a time from the old harness so you can put them together. The way they need to be. Uh, 
That's number three right there, so I'm gonna cut it off. I don't know if you can see any of this, guys, but it's a hard spot for me to do anything with. I just got to hope and pray that when the other harness was put on here, it was done right. Uh, that'd be a mess up. And you just don't know when you pull one of these trucks out of a field. It's on there. There. Whew. This process is slow. go here all right we're on number four take the old harness hold it in the same direction one two that's number three you see how these right here are crossed if you just went through here snipping them you'd be in a mess one two three four is this one right here And of course, five will be the next one, which is at the end. And I'm counting them from that direction. One, two, three, four, five. And matching them up that way. So I'll go to this one, holding it in the same orientation. One, two, three, four, five. We're on number four. Just trim four off. Now, I do highly recommend putting these ends on first before you get the harness in here. It just, it's just going to save you a lot of time. I'll get this last one put on and we'll move on to the next thing. So I found some of this wiring loom covering, whatchamacallit, inside the truck. So this, I didn't have to spend a dime for this. And normally I would say that you, you probably really need to cut this harness down smaller, but I'm gonna I went ahead and use the full length of it and I just don't see that it's gonna be that big a deal and the main reason I did is because like I said if this truck runs I'm probably gonna replace this entire harness the actual truck harness so I'll be able to cut these off and reuse this harness again you know what I'm saying I think so all right we're gonna get this wrapped up plugged up And there you have the new harness for the valve cover front side, passenger side. Um, we'll put it back together and then we'll move on. All right, so I have the uh, Glow Prug relay 
thingamajig back in and have the wiring hooked back up. Like I said, the reason why I left this so long is because when I replace the engine harness, I can reuse that harness, if that makes sense. So, okay, we're moving on from there. I'm going to change the fuel filter, put some diesel in it, and we're going to move over to the air filter. I didn't snug this down real hard last time for this reason. Out of here. So, I'm just gonna put some diesel in here because if you watch the other videos, you know this thing is bone dry. And yeah, I'm spilling some. It'll be okay. A little bit more, maybe. Probably too much, and that's okay. So, so don't panic when you see something coming out. Hopefully, fuel pump works. But out of everything I ordered, the new fuel pump is one of the only things that actually showed up. So, if that's the case, we'll get to that. On to the air filter. So this thing's still pretty nasty inside of the cover here. I still gotta figure out how I'm supposed to get that off. How does that come off? I don't know, but I gotta get this off. And, uh, yeah, get all this cleaned out, get the new air filter in it. And then uh, we're going to be really close to throwing a battery in this thing. I've got a couple more wires to mess with and then we're there. Get this air box off. Probably ought to use it. <laughs> an actual wrench, but hey. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a job for the shop back. Crap, that's nasty. Mm, 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 mm. Good thing is it don't look like they got past the filter. Thank goodness. But dang, look at that. What a disaster. Back to the shop back. And here we are. Anyway, you get the picture. I'm gonna finish this out right here and install the new one. <clears throat> Damn, that battery's heavy. There it is. Oh, you probably didn't see any of that. Okay, so if you watched any of my other videos, you recognize this battery. It's one of the ProGuide uh, batteries. Uh, they're pretty pricey, but it's a deep cycle battery, and they're just good batteries. So I'm going to just hook up one battery on this thing, leaving the other one out. Uh, let see if that's going to be enough to turn it over. So give me a minute. I'm going to clear all of this stuff off, hit, off here, and uh, then we'll get back and hook some stuff up this battery and see what we got. Okay, so what I'm going to do here 
is I'm going to hook up all the positives and then I'm gonna to touch the ground see what we have and what we don't have that's gonna be the plan here so one of the things we want to do here is be listening listening I'm trying to determine what has to be hooked up what doesn't have to be hooked up all of those things as well so, there's the ground. It's gonna be hard to reach, but I think we can make it work. Yep. All right. I don't see any smoke yet. Just wanted to touch, just long enough for me to, you know, test all this out. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna go around. Come around here. I think I heard this fuse blow. Oh, there's no fuse in it. Yeah, it could be a problem. So, I'm gonna try to put a I think it was a 25 amp fuse. I remember looking in it. Oh, these aren't the right ones either. Damn it! Oh. Uh, hmm. I was able to move the battery over far enough to get these lines on, and I did find a fuse. So we'll see what happens now. See the little sparky spark? I'm gonna just test this fuse real quick while I'm at it. Huh, good. I don't see any smoke. Interior lights busted, I believe, yeah. Turn the key on and pray. All right. Wait to start came on. Well, if the fuel gauge is right, then we have a full tank of fuel. Doubt it's right. Wow. Okay. I guess uh, I'm going to try to see if it'll crank over. Well, we'll see, I guess. <clears throat> there. We're in the cab. I didn't hear anything buzzing or anything. Well, got a little ringing and a dinging. Just cycling the key a few times here before you really have at it who knows just to find out what, what the starter is i guess wow <laughs> all right hey this is sign. i had a little spark just over here this is gonna have to be tightened down I'm gonna give her some loopy juice. Let's see what happens. <laughs> this thing's gonna crank. <laughs> wow.
<laughs> wow. Give her a little more of the special sauce. Wow. Blew all that, Blew crap, all that crap out of there real quick. She wants to run. Wow, it blew crap everywhere. Hopefully the other camera caught all that. Come on, baby. Never dream that truck would have come back to life that quick. Some water evaporating. Wow. Unreal. <laughs> and that makes you feel good when you know it you know it's got a fighting chance we do have a check engine light on and uh we should we should have one on. rpm gauge is working it looks like it may not be charging according to this up here so i'm gonna get a voltmeter and check that uh, oil pressure is pretty decent Looks like the fuel gauge is, is on the on the fritz. Uh, I am, I do have plans to pull this uh, bed off of this truck and uh, take go into the tanks and, and check all that stuff. Okay, now if you look here, you see the blinking on our shifter. So we definitely have something going on transmission wise. But everything seems to be working. I know we have a lot of wiring damage, but I kinda need to inspect to see what I'm looking for there. I need to get a rear light here. Got busted my tail end. Got to get a top brake light because that can affect lockup on the transmissions in these trucks. That might be a lot of the problem. Uh, what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to let it sit here in idle. I know it's got oil in it. I'm going to look around on it and uh, make sure we're not leaking anything. I don't think we are. Hey, headlights and stuff do work. Not great, but 
So yesterday afternoon, you know, as you see in the video here, uh, the truck was idling, idling great, running good. Um, now, several things did happen though, and it got too dark to film any of it. It did die on its own, um, and I actually tried to hit the accelerator, and when I pressed it, nothing happened. I'll get onto that later on. Uh, might not be this video, but then you know, in an upcoming video, I'll get onto that part of it. But I believe that there's either a fuel delivery situation where the fuel pump might have you know kicked the bucket during that process um, or that it's possible that the ICP or the IPR valve are out maybe both a wire so I'm gonna take a gander inside here and see if I can notice anything that's just obvious if not then um, I'm gonna unplug the ICP sensor and hopefully that'll tell the computer to go into a default mode which should allow me to crank the truck if it does then we'll know that's the problem if it doesn't we'll move on from there so we're going to try that real quick so uh, let me get on to that okay so as you look right here this right here is your icp sensor and it's injection control pressure it's a uh, it basically is in communication with the IPR the computer uh, about how much pressure is is happening and all works in conjunction with the high pressure oil pump which is right here and um, yeah so I'm gonna unplug it we're gonna start there I don't see any oil in it and that's good that's actually a really good sign uh, that is an original motor craft part so it's probably the original one from the truck i want to get in here and we'll hook the battery back up real quick and then i'm going to get in here and try to fire it up with that unplugged and just just kind of see what happens all right we're back inside just going to turn the key on just have a kind of a look here at all the gauges um, everything looks good wait to start came on and went off Notice how the RPM gauge isn't moving either, so that leads me to believe we might have a crank position sensor problem. Okay, so it didn't start just by unplugging that. I'm gonna give it some more of the happy sauce real quick. I'm not noticing that. Huh. See, it's strange to me that it did try to fire off of that. Okay. Huh. Well. So, that's kind of where the investigation's got to start. It doesn't mean that ICP isn't bad, necessarily, but it does mean that that's probably not causing the actual problem right now. Um, so here's what I'm going to do next. I don't know where my fuel pressure gauge is. I think one of the boys might have it, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up that valve, and I'm going to press it with something and see if I can get any fuel pressure out of it just kind of see what happens with that um, real quick all right guys so I'm gonna give you an idea of what I've done here a little more probing around went and took this line off here from the fuel bowl um, it has nothing coming out of it I'm thinking since I can't really find any fuel pressure here either we're just not getting fuel per, any fuel here at all. And I know it doesn't build the actual pressure per se. Um, 
but that shouldn't be bone dry i wouldn't think so i think that's where we're, we're headed down this road here is i think we have a fuel pump problem and uh so i'm going to try to set you guys up to where you can watch this little fitting right here this hose right here and see if you see any fuel coming out that's going to be your job Maybe you guys will be able to see what's going on over there. I'm really not sure. Try you like that. See what happens. Hopefully you don't crash and burn. Did you see anything? <laughs> that was really strange how it kicked on and tried to crank, you know? Um, you know. Hmm. Well, interesting, for sure. Take this back off. Well, there's fuel in there. For sure. Uh, there's not as much fuel in there, though, as you'd think that you would need. Uh, let's set this over to the side. Try not to get it filthy. And hopefully you guys can see down in there well enough to when I review the tape. I don't know. Maybe y'all can see in there. Maybe. I just can't see it well enough. We'll try that. Don't fall over and get trashed. So, after reviewing the tape, it looks like uh, the fuel pump is pumping fuel. Now, whether it's pumping enough, I don't know, but it's working. So, I'm going to put the fuel filter back in there, and I'm going to call that in good shape for right now. Um, IPR, uh, H-pop, I'm going to have to just go through some, some diagnostics. Okay, we've got the battery charger here on it. I'm starting to get a little low on the battery. Um, after looking around here a little bit more, putting a little more time in on it, I think we might have an IPR problem. I do have those parts ordered. They're just not here yet. Um, but we're definitely having something going on there. Um, I'm going to take the top plug off of this iPop or high, high pressure oil pump. Man, I apologize for all the shadows, guys. There is a, a little Allen right there on high pressure oil pump. I think I'm gonna try to get that out of there and just and make sure that there's oil in this pump. That might be my next move. The IPR is hidden deep in the bowels down here 
you know it's a pain in the butt to get to it's a pain in the butt to deal with so uh, yeah I may have to go on in there after it but it's not gonna be easy to mess with so I don't even know if I'll be able to film that uh, I will try though if I can all right I did avoid y'all a little bit of cussing because this thing was tight. I had to dig through every single, every single Allen wrench that I had to finally find one that fit. I do not know what size it is. But as you can see, that high pressure oil pump is completely full of oil. That's not going to be our problem. The high pressure oil pump, I believe, is fine. So I'm going to put that back in. So the high pressure oil pump seems to be in good shape. Try to snug this down. I'll get crazy with it. So, I'm really starting to wonder if maybe since our fuel gauge isn't right, maybe there's just no fuel left in the tank. Maybe I should go get five gallons of diesel and uh, come pour that in. And um, go from there, maybe. I don't I don't know. I think I'm, I'm leaning more and more toward the IPR. But, uh, yeah, like I said, it's hard to say. That's the update. So, my bright idea is this. I don't know because the fuel gauge doesn't work on either tank. And I'm going to assume, because it was still on the back tank, that the back tank's the tank everybody was using. And I'm going to assume it was empty. I know it's a red jug. It doesn't have gas in it. It just went and got some diesel. So we're going we're gonna to see about this real quick. might be something as simple as this because it ran really good when it cranked up so we'll put five gallons of fuel in here and uh, we'll just see what happens we'll see if that solves the issue I'm gonna give it a shot and see what happens I noticed it took a little bit longer that time for the uh, oil pressure gauge to kick. It could be simply because we undid the top of the uh, H-pop a few minutes ago and got a little air in there. I'll let it cool down a minute and we'll give it another try. So, to answer the question, will it run? Yeah, this truck runs. It actually runs pretty dang good. And even though it died, and I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got an idea of what's wrong. Uh, I noticed that the um, RPM gauge quit moving and while trying to crank it over. So, we might have a cam position or a crank position sensor uh, malfunction here, which is pretty typical. These things, it happens a lot to them when they're. You know a running driving truck every day so with it setting up i figure after we woke it up you know it, it probably went out also uh i have some suspicions about the ipr so i have parts on the way when they get here we'll uh get back at it but that's all the time i'm gonna have for this week to get this video out to you guys uh we'll get into this thing a little further and see if we can't get it what or where to run on every turn and then we'll move on to transmission and see what we can figure out there once again thanks for joining 
me on the channel here. Like, subscribe, and all that good stuff that everyone asks you to do. I'm a small channel. Probably going to stay small. But hey, if you like what you see, follow along. It's going to be fun. Till next time, we'll see you guys.